Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 26, 2022 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary, Rob addresses a common issue of URL shorteners. They sure are handy and yes, uh, very commonly used, but some users are concerned about not knowing where the link will exactly lead them. If you want a bit more transparency, Rob has a quick shell script for you to figure out where the journey goes after clicking the link. The script will use curl to extract the location header in the response. This header then, of course, will tell you what the next URL will be. Could, of course, be another URL shortener. And then I mentioned that I'm going to talk less about malicious packages. Well, we got some news from PyPy, and I think it was still worth mentioning, and it isn't all good news. PyPy announced that they observed how several package maintainers' credentials were compromised in a phishing attack. The credentials were then used to inject malware into the packages that the victim owned and had control over. The phishing message was actually quite cleverly done, I think. It claimed to come from PyPy and it asked the developer to complete a mandatory validation to avoid having their packages removed. Now, there was a lot of talk lately about requiring things like uh, two-factor authentication and such. So, somewhat plausible uh, to a developer that they may receive a message like this, even though PyPy states that they will never remove a package just because you didn't respond to an email uh, like this. Given all the news, so developers did click on the link, which led them then to a fake uh, phishing site that impersonated a PyPy login page and uh, may even have uh, collected second factors. If you're using just a one-time password, then of course they could intercept that and immediately use uh, that uh, code, but PyPy isn't sure if that happened. If you used one of the hardware authenticators, like these WebAuthn-based authenticators, then you shouldn't have a problem. So be careful out there and, of course, use multi-factor authentication, if possible, with a hardware token. But while we got more phishing-related news, remember how Twilio and Cloudflare were recently targeted by a quite sophisticated uh, phishing scam? Group IB now linked these attacks to more than 130 similar attacks against different organizations. They call this particular group Octopus, uh, according to Group IB, 9,931 accounts were compromised across those 130 organizations. The name Octopus uh, hints at a common link that Group IB identified. These attackers specifically targeted Okta credentials and two-factor authentication codes. The phishing messages uh, went uh, to an SMS, uh, to a phone number, and they mimicked then the Okta authentication page. It's not really clear uh, where the attacker got those phone numbers from, but one of the big targets here was also phone companies. So that may be, according to uh, Group IB, where the data came from. And if you're trying to deploy ransomware on a system and you run into anti-malware, one way to disable anti-malware may be a rootkit. But as an attacker, uh, you're now faced with the problem that, well, how do you get a rootkit on the system if there is antivirus? Luckily, on some systems, well, there is a rootkit pre-installed. Trend Micro uh, wrote about how ransomware recently took advantage of a driver installed by the game Genjin Impact. Never heard of it, but, well, according to Trend Micro, it's quite popular. And, of course, with these games, cheating is often a problem. Uh, to prevent cheating, Genshin Impact installs a special anti-cheat driver. And that essentially sort of behaves like a rootkit. And it has a well-known vulnerability that can be abused to disable antivirus. 
to make things worse, the driver may be installed even if the game is actually no longer installed on the system because it's sort of installed as a separate component. And some LastPass users received notices today that uh, the password manager company LastPass suffered a security incident. Apparently, it affected parts of LastPass's development environment. Some source code got stolen. Apparently, nothing got changed and no user's password vaults were affected. What I find always a little bit sad is that if you're using password managers, and I think you should use them, but uh, there's pretty much no password manager, maybe Bitwarden and such, that allows you to sync passwords without entrusting them into some kind of cloud solution in order uh, to support the subscription-based business model that all of uh, these uh, password managers are using. And finally, if you are bored today, well, I got a patch for you. Atlassian uh, fixed a vulnerability in its uh, Bitbucket server and data center. The vulnerability allows for command injection. This vulnerability was disclosed as part of a bug bounty and it's expected that more details, including proof of concept code, will be released in about 30 days. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday.